Hello everyone and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations 2 Prosecutor's Gambit where I'm determined to get through this this week. Even if this ends up being an 8 minute episode. <laughs> but, so, it seems like I was half right about this. Where it seemed like because of that note, she thought they were working together so she killed him. But also I think the frame, like, she's trying to frame him. Nancy, you have no more excuses. Judge Cavill, your verdict please. Nope, she's not ready yet. Which occurs me, there would be appear to be little room for doubt. I hereby give my verdict. Bronco Knight was murdered, but... Oh, we can go another round. In the name of the goddess of justice, who is it this time? <laughs> oh, here comes a breakdown. A warden? <laughs> it's a joke. It's all a big, stupid joke. People just don't get it, do you? I think we've proven that to you who didn't understand things correctly. Me? Please, darling, I understand it all perfectly well. Thank you very much. And I understand that there's a glaring contradiction in your theory, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> You're just grasping at straws now. I have no time for this. Your Honor, the verdict. Oh. Uh. I'm curious to hear what the warden has to say. What? You're a dull, Verity. I just have... One last thing to say, then Mr. Edgeworth can declare himself the winner. Y y you rang? Does anybody remember a certain autopsy report? Of course, we received the finalized version only this morning. That's right, and I was listening to what you told us about it, Verity, even if no one else was. You said the wound was four inches deep. Four inches? Wait. Really, read me this, Mr. Edgeworth. How does a tiny chisel make a four inch wound? Forgive me, O oh goddess, I came perilously close to making a terrible mistake. Or saving us a lot of time, one of the two. Looks like your theory is the one that doesn't hold water, M Edgeworth. What now, hmm? Well, well, what do we do? Uh, it, it'll be fine, Mr. Edgeworth always comes through, right, sir? I got this. Uh, looks to me like the Milesatron's out of commission. Uh, you're in a 32, aren't you? Why don't you do something? Throw things on their head with a desperate bluff. Blurt out the first mind-blowing thing that comes to you. I know a guy. Yeah, look, Detective is. I'm as much a man of action as the next guy. Uh, but without evidence, we're up a creek without a paddle here. Uh, this might be the end of the road. We can't give up now. We have to do something. I'm certain that Warden Lagarde is the killer. It's the only explanation that fits the facts of the case. But if the chisel wasn't the murder weapon, what other bladed weapon is there in, here in this facility? Seems you still don't have all the answers. Nor the evidence to provide those answers. Alas, we must wait until the trial to see this matter resolved, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, come on, G. You're just giving the killer a chance to destroy the oh. evidence. You call the judicial process into question, Mr. Fender. Very. Neep, uh, nope, uh, not me. Uh, nah, it was, uh, it was Miles over there. I gotta go. <laughs> uh, I, I tried, Miles. Any bright ideas? What is the real murder weapon since it's clearly not the chisel? Confound it. <laughs> this question throws everything we've deduced out the window. Nothing to add, Mr. Edwith. Allow me to remind you that claims not supported by sufficient evidence are subject to the harshest penalties. We can do this. We can do this. It's hopeless. I can't think of anything. I need more time. No, the same to admit it. I. You can't give up now. Remember what Mr. Fender said. Simeon's counting on us. Without us, he's. Remember how upset he was. He was devastated. We need more pain than him over Mr. Knight's death. Oh, nobody's no more, in more pain than him over Mr. Knight's death. There's no way he did it. But if we can't save him, who will? And what's more, he believes in us. He's sitting in that cell waiting for us to bring him some good news. And I, for one, won't walk away until we have some. Okay. Jeez, Miles, your little buddy there is quite the motivational speaker. And she's right, too. When you find yourself on the ropes, think of your client. Picture them pleading with you to help them. Doesn't that make you want to fight back as hard as you can until the very end? Think of your old man, good old Gregory. No matter how bad things looked, 
he'd always find a way to turn it around and save his client. And you're just like him, right? If there's any way to force a turnabout here, you're the one who will find it. Simeon's counting on you. Hey, Judge Gavel. You seem to have recovered your composure, Mr. Edgeworth. But if you mean to attempt a defense, I would advise you to consider the ramifications. You've repeatedly proposed misguided theories and made numerous false accusations. If you do so again, I will have no choice but to judge you unfit to serve as a prosecutor and relieve you of your badge for good. He's right. I put forward a number of theories that proved to be flawed in one way or another. Have I made some sort of fundamental oversight? Wait, she said my theories were misguided. Nothing to say, and the court will tolerate no more of your time wasting. I hereby. Sir. Mr. Edgeworth! Give my verdict. That's it! I've been thinking about it the wrong way all this time. My theories weren't misguided, I was being misled. The defendant, Simeon Saint. Saint. I think it's a little soon for that, Your Honor. I'd say it's well past two, darling. Wouldn't you agree, Verity? Mr. Edgeworth? You may proceed. But what? I'd like to remind you of a few things. The sighting of his dog, Helmet. The fact that he wasn't at the show. These and other factors made Mr. Kane is the obvious suspect at first. So again, Mr. Edgeworth. He's most proud of your blunder. But what if the real killer wanted us to, sus to suspect Mr. Canis? What if it was all carefully arranged? What if the same was true of the chisel, our purported murder weapon? That had been stabbed multiple times in the same place with a bladed instrument. What if we were stabbed with the chisel after the real murder weapon had been removed? Just to leave traces of blood on it for us to find. That was how the killer misled us into thinking the chisel is the murder weapon. But why mislead us in this way? Why indeed? Why make us think the chisel's the murder weapon rather than whatever it was really used? In order to get in order to get Canis transferred. Warden, you took advantage of what the chisel seemed to suggest. What it suggested? Are you talk? What are you talking about, dear? Mr. Winner, if I were to tell you the murder weapon was a chisel, what would you think? Huh? Ah, that Mr. Canis is the killer. There you have it. That was the trap the warden set for us. Oh, Mr. Canis is a bunch of chisels, so she wanted us to think it was one of his, right? Indeed, that was her plan right from the start. To frame Bodhidharma Canis. Your reasoning would appear to be sound. Warden Lagarde certainly seems to harbor deep and abiding hatred for Mr. Canis. However, I think you know what I'm going to say next. But alone, that is not sufficient proof that Warden Lagarde is a killer. I feel like we have more pointing to her than there is to Simeon, but you know, whatever. I knew that wouldn't be enough. Of course it wouldn't. It really shouldn't be, though. There's only one thing that will prove it. The real murder weapon that we know, we now know, must exist. If you don't prove your theory, then this conversation ends here. If we could find the real murder weapon. How many times do we have to go over this? We searched the prison from top to bottom. Yes, this is quite correct. No other possible murder weapon has been found, so I'm afraid we're at a bit of an impasse. Objection! I can still prove my case yet, Your Honor, because it's still here inside the prison. This would have made sure of that. The security gate! Hm. I'm glad you at least remember what it is, and do you remember what it does? Of course I do, I'm not an idiot. The security gate detects metal. Uh, which you means you can't bring anything in metal into the prison or take it out. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why I keep bumping into the microphone. Very animated at this. No, precisely. If there's another murder weapon, it cannot have been taken off the premises. But nor could have been brought to the prison in the first place. So we find ourselves right back where we began. Judge Gavel. What I am trying to tell you, Mr. Edgeworth, is that if you wish me to believe that there is another murder weapon here in the prison, you will also have to explain to me how it got here. Alright, we know that the chisel was smuggled into the prison inside a pocket chest case. But our contention is that the chisel is not the real murder weapon. So if the weapon came from outside the facility, then there must have been a way to bring it in. Yes, the question of the hour is this. Can you show me this alternative route? <clears throat> how did the weapon Warden Lagarde used to get into the prison? 
You borrowed evidence from the police to help your investigation, is that correct? Why, well, yes, everything related to Canis is with me now. Heaven knows how many times I've hauled a secretive scoundrel in my office to talk to me. Uh, of course, that's how. The fact that this is here with us now shows how a bladed object could have been brought through the facility as well. What? Is it the map? That doesn't help at all. Car for fun by Mr. Canis. He seems to be engaged in correspondence via postal mail. Winner gavel and the warden search the prison for the murder weapon but couldn't find anything. Is off due to three hour gap. Uh, security gates deployed at the entrance to both the detention center and the prison proper, capable of detecting items made of metal. Photo of the tunnel between the prison and detention center shows paw prints made by a bear. Game 6 a.m. 27th, and since that from a to the neck. Mr. Canis's bells. Only two such bells exist. One attached to the helmet, the dog, the other to Canis's knife, which was seized. Oh. Is that it? Am I thinking about this right? So I think it was Canis's knife. Did the dog move it? Take that. That would explain why the dog was in there to begin with. Okay. All right. I hope I'm thinking about this right. I mean, that was the right answer to this, but I, I hope I have a path forward. Allow me to remind you of our conversation with Mr. Canis yesterday. Yes, it was but one of my bells. One of only two in existence, right? Just two. Two and only two. One for my knife and one for my beloved helmet. Exquisitely crafted. Yep. Yeah. I must be able to use my tools precisely. Of course, as you said, the knife has long since been taken from me. Yep. Yeah. So you see, there is a way for objects to be brought into the prison unscrutinized. This part of the evidence wouldn't the guard borrowed from the police. What, what, what? Uh, okay, so that was my other thought at the beginning when they were talking about uh, bringing all this, like she was talking about moving around all this stuff. But I thought she like manipulated the bells. Mr. Canis's knife was part of the evidence in the case against him and that evidence was here in the prison. So she just moved, she just took the evidence, brought him in for questioning. So that way she could bring in the evidence and then the knife would be right there. Not only that, but the knife had a certain bell attached to it. The, the bell that was attached to the chisel. No, correct. The killer took the bell from the knife and attached it to the chisel. But that can't be right. The chisel only had Mr. Knight's fingerprints on it. Easy enough to explain if the killer wore gloves. She made it look as if the chisel was the murder weapon and then attached the bell to it. In doing so, she made sure that all the evidence pointed to Mr. Canis, who had access to the evidence from which the bell was taken. My only the person to whom it had been entrusted. Who was it, sir? Who's been messing with the evidence? Oh my god. Come shoot. I believe that would be you. Isn't that correct, Warden the Guard? Poor Gumshoe. Bells aren't exactly rare, you know. Anybody could have set that up. <laughs> Unluckily for you, that isn't quite true. These particular bells are unique because there are only two of them in existence. <laughs> what? By touching the bell to the chisel, you as good as declared yourself the killer. But you don't have any proof that the knife was ever he even here to begin with. I don't, not yet anyway. Mr. Winner, I'd like you to order another search of the prison right away. Huh. Um, but if you do find something, that's going to make things awkward for me. 
This isn't about what's convenient for you. We have to find the truth. You're a prosecutor, aren't you? Well, yeah, but, you know, it's a worthless excuse for a prosecutor. If I had investigative authority, I wouldn't be sitting on it. Anyhow, that's not my decision to make. The warden would have to authorize it. You know full well that she will do no such thing. You have the power to insist on a search. Use it. Sorry, darling, but not without that evidence. Goddess of Justice cannot bestow her blessing on those who lack the proof to support their claims. Our work here is done. The rest of this matter will have to be settled in the courtroom. No. If we give Lagarde the opportunity, she'll destroy whatever evidence is left. I have to object. I have to stop them. But what do I say? I don't have anything concrete to offer. What am I thinking? I'm never this reckless. No. I can't back down now. I've got to put everything on the line. I'm not a prosecutor right now. I'm an associate attorney with a client to defend. Only I can save Mr. Satan. That means... Even if my chances are a million to one, it's still worth a shot. It's now or never. Should I object? Do it. I suppose this must be how a certain serial bluffer always feels. Regardless, I cannot walk away. Objection! Wait, Your Honor. This had better be good, Mr. Twith. I've got it. Got what exactly? The real murder weapon, of course. I know where Mr. Canis' knife is. D do you really, Mr. Edgeworth? No, I do. Not at all. If I don't know better, I'd say that you were bluffing. Huh. You wound me, Your Honor. I don't know the meaning of the word. This is terrible for my heart. There's no way you could. It's not here, I tell you. Well, you seem very sure of that. Well, would you be so kind as to enlighten us? Where is the real murder weapon? Think, Miles. Think. Somewhere not even the police would search. A blind spot in the zoo. A hiding place that the warden could be absolutely sure of. Hiding place? No. She used the same trick. Yeah, that's what I was starting to think. No, that's ridiculous, isn't it? But the more I think about it, how many foolproof ways to evade detection could there be? Mr. Edgeworth, how long do you intend to keep us waiting? There's the faintest possibility I'm right. But if I'm wrong, we stand to lose everything. Your Honor, this is where the real murder weapon is hidden. Right. Hey, Here, in the yard. Indeed. Don't believe I understand. Would you care to explain a little more? Where exactly is a real murder weapon hidden? Uh... Right there! Of course, that's where it must have been. What's the matter detector? It's the metal detector! I completely forgot about that! Oh, that would have made that so much easier. I was just mostly going along the lines of the, like, going along the lines of, this alligator has been so put in our face, it's got to be important somehow. The metal detector was reacting to something inside her, after all. Your Honor, I'd like to remind you of this piece of evidence. The chisel. Ah, uh, didn't we just figure out that isn't the murder weapon? I recall that Mr. Canis had this chisel in his dog's mouth. Would you believe that the real murder weapon was hidden in much the same way? Oh, yeah. That's right, the murder weapon is hidden inside the alligator in that pond over there. What? No way. We detected the presence of a metallic object during our earlier investigation. Judge Cavill, we need to know what's inside that alligator. Understood. Then we will need to summon a veterinarian. I'm sure I can get the little sweetie open up for us. I'd be happy to give it a try. Please, by all means. Warden the guard, the real murder weapon is about to be revealed. Why not do the right thing and confess? Uh, I, I have nothing to confess. As you wish, then you can simply wait and watch as your lies are exposed. <laughs> Sorry, we got it. This has to be it! 
It's over, Fifi Lagarde. The real murder weapon was Bodhidharma's Canis's knife. Making you the only person who could have killed Bronco Knight. Oh, we got her! I'm not the criminal here. This is all Canis is doing. I did the right thing. That was a threat. He was Canis' life dog. Kurt, the despicable, despicable man Canis. Why did you come here and ruin my perfect little home? We, we could have been happy forever if it wasn't for him. He, he, he ruined my paradise on Earth. He ruined everything. Curse him. Curse that pitiless, bu pitiless butcher. Awful terrible. Curse him. There we go. <laughs> Nailed it. So they're gonna let Simeon go, right? Prosecutor Thwinner, sir. The test results have just come back. Thwinner? I guess we've all been under a lot of stress. Traces of Bronco Knight's blood were found on Mr. Canis's knife. It's just like you said, sir. Congratulations on a stunning victory. Thank you, officer. Excellent work. You can continue complimenting me if you like. Yes, sir. The winner wins again. I, I think I'm willing up a little. Rage? <laughs> Excellent work, Eusis. Just a few loose ends to tie up and we're done. Huh? What are you talking about? I just solved the case, didn't I? We have yet to confirm whether or not Knight really was working for Mr. Canis. It would be vital to know if Warden Lagarde was simply jumping to conclusions on that front. Uh huh, huh. Lewis, and then there's you. Ah, uh, well, uh, then I guess we'd better get back to our investigation. Alright, officer, you're with me. You're about to see the winner win a whole lot more. Prepare to witness first rate investigative talent and action. Yes, sir. I'm right with you, sir. Can't wait to watch you at work. It's winning time. This case will cause quite a stir. Attempted murder of a president is news enough, and now his would-be assassin has been murdered. The knight never sought to kill the president in the first place. The truth is not always as important as it might seem, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, of both society and the law. How can you even say that? You don't have to believe me. However... As the prosecutor, Mr. Edgeworth is applied to accept that this is the reality of the world he operates in. Being a prosecutor is about more than proving people guilty, that's what I believe. We're all free to believe as we choose, but the law is not to be toyed with for our own personal goals. If you refuse to accept this, then you must be prepared to suffer the consequences. What does that even mean? Wait, you're not gonna take his... I'm afraid I must be going now. Farewell, Mr. Edgeworth. Bye. Judge Gavel's right. There must be only one set of laws for everyone. But if following the law means sacrificing the truth, can I really do that in good conscience? I keep forgetting because of the order I played them in, I keep forgetting that this is before, like, Spirit of Justice and, and those games. A Simeon, you're out! <laughs> Hi, Regina. Is everything all right? They did let you out, right? Uh, yeah. But I'm so confused about what's going on. Some guy just came and said I was free to go. And then I have Mr. Edgeworth to thank. You sure do, Mr. Edgeworth. Find out who the real killer is. W wow, really? You did that for me, Mr. Edgeworth? Eep. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Stop staring at me like that. I'm innocent, I swear. Don't pull the rug from out from under me now. Stop it, silly. It's true. He saved you. So say thanks already. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Thank you. And a great big Regina Berry thank you from me, too. Mr. Saint talking directly to me. Small victories, I suppose. Um, can I just ask one question, Mr. Attorney? No, sir. Not actually an attorney, though. I thought Bronco was my friend. No, my best friend. I trusted him. But now... But now... Well, it's just... I never knew... I never would have believed that he he could hate somebody enough to want to kill them. If he kept something like that for me, then he never really trusted me, did he? That's not true, Simeon. Of course he trusted you. N no, he didn't. If he had, he'd have just told me. I could have stopped him. I could have told him that hate never helps. That he had to let go of all that stuff. Mm, Mr. Saint, I think you're forgetting something. 
I should show him the thing that proves Knight trusted him. Uh, cause you had him bring the, the chess set. Take that. It, it's a chess set I brought for him. Knight had hidden a, hidden a chisel inside. I imagine he meant to use it to escape. But, but, what? You mean he was using me? No, he believed in you. He knew he could count on you to bring it, and that you would never be so untrusting as to look inside. I imagine that by not telling you, he was hoping he could keep you from getting caught up in this mess. Oh. B -b Bronco, why didn't you tell me? At least you understand now, right, Simeon? I'm sure he does. He may not show it, but Simeon's no dummy. A good night's sleep, and he'll be completely over this whole thing by tomorrow. It's not as complimentary as you think it is. Uh, I'll, I'll try. I have to. For Bronco, I, I have to show him I can become the best animal trainer out there. That's the spirit. I completely forgot that money was from previous games. I think I mentioned that a while back. But that was two weeks ago for me. Oh, I almost forgot. We're uh, doing a new show soon. I'd love it if you could come, Mr. Edgeworth. No, every time I get involved with a circus, I hate my life. Oh, he's back. I'll uh, be joining Regina on stage for this one. That's right. The Bear Big Circus is the biggest, most fabulous event in town. You'll have oodles of fun. And you probably get framed for murder. Sounds great, doesn't it, Mr. Edgeworth? Come on, we have to go. Um, uh, well, uh, I'll think about it. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> All right, Simeon, we've got some training to do. I think it's time you and Regent got acquainted. What? Regent the, the tiger? No way, I can't. No, 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 no. Oh, you'll be fine, silly. You'll never meet a nicer kitty cat. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Please, Regina, anything but that, please. Another satisfied customer. Do we get paid? He left without paying us. Well, that was really something. Smiles, talk about putting it all out of the bag. I couldn't have done it without you, Fender. Without your timely intervention, she would have gotten away. Besides, I have you to thank for even being able to investigate the case in the first place. No, oh, stop it. Pet me on the back any harder, and you're gonna make me blush or topple over. I suppose it would be asking too much for you to take this seriously. Seriously, Miles, my friend, I'm always serious. Anyway, how does it feel to save an innocent client? That's what it means to be an attorney, after all. To be an attorney. I'm gotta say, I had a blast. Reminded me of the good old days. Like Gregory was standing there right beside me. <laughs> it's been like a zillion years since I felt this warm and fuzzy on the job. No, oh, that's uh, good. Bittersweet. I'm not sure. Say, Miles, you ever thought about going into the defense game full time? Excuse me. You know, pick up where Gregory left off. Get out there and actually help people. Hey, pal. Don't get, don't get any big ideas. Mr. Edgeworth ain't about the switch sides. Why not? Coming over to the light side, it's all the rage. Everybody's doing it these days. Come on, Mr. Fender, you know it's not about that. Chill, team, chill. Don't get it twisted. I was just asking a perfectly innocent question. No, you weren't. Thank you were. <laughs> Looks like you got a mean defense team there yourself, Miles. Defender, I'm a prosecutor. Yep, and I'm an attorney. You could be one, too. I'm serious. Well, I said my piece. You change your mind, you know who to call. I'll be waiting. All right, we did it. Follow my father's footsteps. I mean, it's kind of hard because we know kind of how this plays out a little bit, just based on the other games. Could I really do such a thing? I'm going to become a defense attorney, just like my dad. An attorney like my father. Me? There we go, Captain Turnabout Achievement received. I will save my game, but we'll call it an episode here. That was a fantastic case. I love it. Kept me guessing about who did it till the very end. Like, it wasn't until... Really, there was no one left that made any sense that I was able to say who it was. That was awesome. And then trying to figure out her motive. Because... Like, you hear it, and it makes a lot of sense, but there's not a lot really thrown in there up to that point that, like, points you in that direction. Like, I'm sure if I played it again, I would see 
like the little hints. Very well done. Very, very well done. I am excited to play the rest of the cases. I hope you're looking forward to seeing them all. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.